Hello and welcome to another very important section of this complete Angular course. In this section, we are going to learn all about authenticating a user by providing sign up and login functionality and also how to make sure that certain protected parts of our application can only be accessed by a logged in user. Now, before we dive into implementing authentication and authorization in our Angular application, let's first understand how authentication and authorization works. In order to authenticate whether a user is valid user or not, the user has to first sign up to the application and then log in using the login credentials provided during the sign up like username and password. So let's say the user is already signed up in our application. Now he's trying to log into the application. So here in this diagram, you can see that we have a client, which would be the browser from where the user will try to log in. And we also have a server where the application data and registered users are stored. Now, when the user tries to log into an application using his login credentials like username and password from the client, a post request will be sent to the server. And this post request is going to contain the user credentials in the request body, like the username and password. The credentials received in the request body will be validated by the server and this validation cannot be done on client because Angular under the hood uses JavaScript, which is executed in the browser. And JavaScript code can be read by any user using browser's developer tool. Right. That's why we do not validate login credentials on the client. Instead, it is done on the server. Now, once the server has validated the authentication data and if the data that is the login credentials if it is valid, the server will send a token in the response to the client. This token is called as JSON Web Token. A JSON Web Token is an encoded string and it is unique for a given client. This JSON Web Token is different every time the user logs in. And it is this JSON Web Token which is used for authorizing a user and gives access to the protected resource. This JSON Web Token, it is generated on the server using some algorithm and a secret string which only the server knows and only the server can validate any incoming token and decide if that token is valid or not. This JSON web token once it is received by the client in the response it is stored in some storage like the local storage of the browser and after logging in if the client wants to access a protected resource it will have to send that JSON web token with the request. This JSON web token, it can be sent with the request using request header or query parameter, etc. to the server. And the server is able to validate this JSON web token because that token was created by the server using a certain algorithm and a secret string, which is only known to the server. Right. So when the client sent a login request to the server, on the server, a JSON web token was created, which was then sent back to the client in the response. So now every time the client wants to access a protected resource with the request, it is going to send that JSON web token. And since the server is the one which created that JSON web token, it will be able to validate whether that JSON web token is valid or not. And this is how the token is secured. We can't generate or edit the JSON web token on the client because as soon as we do that, it will not fit the algorithm and the secret string used on the server and the server will be able to identify that the token is not valid and therefore the server can block access to the protected resource for that client. So the idea is once the user is logged in, a JSON web token gets generated which is valid for that client and it is sent with the response to the client when the user logs in. And now for any subsequent request the client makes to access a protected resource, that JSON web token is sent with the request to the server. Server then validates the token and if the token is valid, client gets access to the protected resource. Otherwise, the resource is blocked for that client. Now, I know it might be a little bit confusing at the moment, but once we start implementing it, it will become more clear how the JSON web token is generated and how it is used for authentication. So on a very high level, this is how the authentication works. For the authentication and authorization, a JSON web token gets generated on the server, which is then sent to the client. Client stores that JSON web token and for any subsequent request, the client is trying to access any protected resource. It will have to send that JSON web token with the request so that the server can validate 
whether that JSON Web Token is valid or not. If it is valid, it will allow client to access the protected resource. Otherwise, it will not allow the client to access the protected resource. It is as simple as that. And also, when the server will send the JSON Web Token to the client, when the client tries to log in, at that time, the client is going to store that JSON Web Token somewhere so that for the subsequent request, it can read that JSON Web Token stored somewhere in the client's memory and then it can send it with the new request. So I hope this part is clear. Now before we proceed further in this section, let's go to our Firebase database. So here we are in our Firebase database where we have two collections, this log collection and we also have this task collection. So this database we created in our previous section when we learned about HTTP requests. And we are going to make use of same database in this section also. And in the previous section, what we did is, if I go to this rules tab, there we set this read and write to true. That means any user can access the collections in this database. But now what we want is, we only want to allow an authenticated user to access this database. That means to read the content from this database and also create new records or update new records in the database. For that, currently we have set it to true. But now what we are going to do is, we are going to set it to auth not equal to null. Okay, we are going to do the same thing for write also. So I'll copy it and here I'll paste it. This simply means that now only an authenticated user should be able to read and write in this database. An anonymous user who is not logged in will not be allowed to read the data from this database or to write any data in this database. So we have changed the rule. Now only an authenticated user can read and write from this database. Let's go ahead and let's publish this rule. So it is now published. And now if we go to our application, if I go to this dashboard component, there you will see that we have an error. You do not have permission to read data. And also if I open developer console, there also you will see that we have an HTTP error response. If I expand it, let me actually clear the console here and let me try to fetch all the tasks. And here you will see that we have an error unauthorized because now an anonymous user cannot read data or write data to our database. Only if the user is authenticated, if he is logged in, then only the logged in user or the authenticated user should be able to read and write data from our database. So here you can see the complete error object. Okay, you see status is 401 and status text is unauthorized. So from the next lecture, we are going to work on authentication and authorization in our Angular application. But keep in mind that in this course, I'm using Firebase as the backend solution. But the concept which you are going to learn in this section, it can be applied to any backend solution. Your backend solution just need to offer endpoints that you can use to create new users and to log users in so that you can receive a JSON web token in the response. If your API supports that and most API do, then you can use that API as well. You don't need Firebase in that case. I'm using Firebase because it is easy, it is free to use, and it does not require us to write any server-side code. That's the only reason why I'm using Firebase in this course. But you can create your own APIs, your own backend solution using any backend programming language like Node.js, Python, etc. So the concepts which you're going to learn here that you can also apply on your own backend solution. All right. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.